Hello, and welcome to the Contemporary American Theater Festival Unmuted series. In the segment that follows, you'll meet one of the playwrights from our repertory, Chisa Hutchinson. Chisa will be talking with founder and producing director Ed Herendeen about her new play, Whitelisted. Thanks for joining us. Chisa, um, how did you respond to seeing, you know, it was only a, a short scene of your brand new play. We've heard it out loud, you know, we've read it together, we've seen a reading. Um, just, you know, riff for us. What was that like for you just to see a piece of it on a Zoom thing, okay? So. Yeah, well, Zoom is weird. <laughs> Zoom yeah. will always be weird. I will never get used to this. I'm a theater, I'm a live theater person. But um, that said, you know, freaking Kate, man. <laughs> freaking Kate McCluggage is um, just her... Mm, her face is just so delicious. You just want to eat it with a spoon. And um, yeah, I, I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. And it, it, it's a real, um, it, it's, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Titillating, tantalizing, tantalizing, I guess is a better word, right? Um, it's real tantalizing to just have like a couple of elements, you know, of like what of, of, of what the full production, just like a little taste, a hint, a whiff of what the, the full production is going to be. Um, and even that much is, is pretty exciting. Yeah, because it's really hard to talk about what's to come because um, we already saw Chase do the prop, the, the <laughs> phone thing. But that is just the beginning, okay? Um, I was so drawn to this play when you sent it to me and I read it. Um, in many ways, because it's a genre I've never worked in, and, and it's a genre that CHF has, we've done mysteries and we've done thrillers, and we actually have a political thriller coming up next week. But to do a true horror um, um, play with, with the special effects that this, this play requires, um, which we've come to learn from you, that when you get a Chisa Hutchinson play, um, read it carefully, because um, you've got to be ready to do the vision of what the playwright wants. And um, as you know, we're, we're, we've had some great design meetings and discussions about how, how to meet these um, incredibly um, creative theatrical challenges. Um, I don't know what else to ask you about this, except that this play remains so, um, I, I, I wish we were in production right now because of um, the relevance of gentrification and, and, and the themes that you're dealing with. Um, and it's so funny until you beat the crap out of us, you know, it, when, it's, when it turns that corner and, it, and it's heartbreaking. So I just, the writing is just phenomenal. Do you have any other things you want to share with us that'll just make us want to sit on the edge of our seat till we see you again in Shepherdstown? Oh man, um, I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> I know, you can't, you can't. Yeah. But I will say that um, I, I think more than with any other play that I've written, I really tried to find a way to, um, uh, I mean, not, not for nothing, but to, to implicate the audience, you know, um, or, or to mm. um, at least get them to connect with this, with this character who is, is problematic in a lot of ways, but also kind of likable and maybe relatable in a lot of ways. And, um, yeah, just just really um, wanting the audience to sit in her skin and to feel all of the things that she's feeling, in, including every jump scare, <laughs> right? Um, and and uh, yeah, I, I I won't mind if the audience was also feeling a little haunted and a little hunted. Yes, oh, that's good. Haunted is another word I'm taking away today. Thank you for that <laughs> word. Okay, um, we have, let's take, we have a time to take Yeah, I think we're going to take some live audience. questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the other thing I just want to ask the audience to think a little bit about is what happens next? At the very uh -huh. end of that scene, you have sort of those scary three knocks. What is out there? Mm. Okay. But also now we're going to take at least one question here. So if someone from the audience wants to raise their hand in that feature on Zoom and ask Chisa a question, uh, and also I want to remind you, many of you had said that you saw Dead and Breathing, you saw Wedding Gift. 
So if you want to ask a question about those two, I think Chisa could still answer those questions, right? <laughs> so Nicole, do we have someone with a question? How about some comments from the chat room? Anybody have any some comments until we get somebody raising? Oh, we've got a raised yes. hand now. All right, so yes. it looks like we've got Richard with us. Richard, would you like to go ahead and unmute? Sure. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. What a pleasure. Peggy, Ed, how are you? Richard Cooper here. Anyhow, awesome. <laughs> she said, this is such a delight. Uh, as soon as the first scene opened and there was this notion of knocking, I said, oh, this is my genre. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, and, and, uh, Teresa over here said, what? you like horror? I said, no, I like the supernatural, the supernatural. And so uh, how do you distinguish uh, between uh, these weird events? Uh, I mean, it, would you classify this as supernatural? Oh yeah, I mean, it's both. It's a supernatural horror, right? Okay. <laughs> and I think the difference is, or uh, the, it's like if, what is it? I'm so I'm a writer, so I'm terrible. I don't remember my math, but like the if A then B, but not necessarily if B then A. So it's um, supernatural, and it's a heart. It's mm, as well. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. But what I, I guess what I mean is, do you think this is something that can really happen? Oh, um, I mean, I guess it depends on your perspective. Like, I'm not going to be one to say that like ghosts don't exist. <laughs> Or um, because for me, that would be a little akin to, you know, I don't know, like white people who have never experienced racism being like, but racism doesn't actually exist, right? Because like, <laughs> why would you, but you don't know. <laughs> like, just so just because it's never happened to you, right? Like, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Um, so I'm not going to say that it's not a thing that could happen. But I, I really, I actually do believe in some kind of divine force i don't necessarily believe that it's like you know a big bearded guy sitting up on a cloud judging everybody with his, his judgy finger you know um but i i really do believe that there's some yeah some some force at work to um to take care of us or um to just melt a phone something yeah. that is able to melt a phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> if that's what it thank takes. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. And hi, Teresa. Um, <laughs> Nicole, do we have another question? Or did you have a question, Ebony? Somebody? Anybody else? Any, we have time for one more question from the audience if somebody wants to raise their hand for Nicole. So the question is from the chat box, when you write plays, what do you want to see as the makeup of your audience? Um, I mean, obviously, because I do tend to center um, black people or at least feature black people and black, a black experience, um, obviously I would love to have some, some black folks in the audience. Um, but the plays, because I, tend to just focus on human stuff for the most part right like to to sh show i hate to use the word universal right but but here we are using universal um uh, because I, I i tend to to deal with um themes that everybody can plug into somehow right that it doesn't necessarily um mean that you cannot enjoy my plays because you're you're not black right um so yeah i think i i, I think my plays are for everyone i hope everybody comes to see it <laughs> um but yeah there's i think that that you know with any play like different people are going to get different things out of it and so um yeah when i sit down to write i i am thinking about how um it's going to be a different play for for white people, for example, than it is for black people. Great, thank you. I think we have one more hand raised. Did you tell yeah, me? Yeah, we've got one more. Uh, Rachel, if you want to join us. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. 
Hi, Rachel. I was joining you. Um, hi to all my CATF folks. I miss you guys very, very much. Um, so I do have a quick question. Um, I am from Pittsburgh, the land of gentrification and pushing African American and other people of color very much out of the city, uh, especially the theater community there has been very historically um, implicit in that gentrification as well. Um, but as I've been on the front lines with the Black Lives Matter movement there for the last several weeks, my question about um, whitelisted, is this play even more relevant now after the horrific murder of George Floyd? Like what has changed like almost in society since you wrote the show? Um, to be honest, I really don't think, I don't think much has changed in as, in as far as like how black people are treated, um, particularly when they sort of bump up against more privileged white people um, in a space. I don't think much has changed. I think this shit been, it's, it's been going on for forever, right? Um, I think people are starting to take notice of it now. I think that, you know, these things help. The, the cell phones, you know, with their, with the video capturing, you know, these women, for example, who will call the police on a dude for bird watching, <laughs> you know, or not for, for bird watching, but like for telling her to like, I don't know, follow a rule. <laughs> that you know is is has is posted right there in the park. Um so I think that people are are noticing these things more and I think that for those people for whom this is a, a kind of a rude awakening seeing um seeing the the video of of you know black folks being policed and being pushed out and being um just bullied, you know, um, and threatened. I think for those folks who are uninitiated, you know, um, that maybe this play will will carry more weight or yes, okay. feel sharper. They will feel it more sharply, maybe. Well said, yeah, well said. So we are going to have to wrap it up and okay. say goodbye to Chisa. I can't believe it. Chisa, we'll see you soon, live in Shepherdstown, and before that, live in New York when we come up. I hope that you'll um, take me out for more Jamaican yeah, we'll food. Can you make that up? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye, so, Chisa. Bye -bye. Everybody in the chat room, love and thanks to Chisa. Please send her your well wishes as we say goodbye. Bye, Chisa.